What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. But through it all, just know that you are not alone. So let's get started. Welcome, Bevan Murphy. Ha, 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 Pedro, thank you for having me on. I'm really excited to get to have a conversation with you and see what happens. How cool. This is a huge honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have a lot of topics to cover, so let's get started. Okay, let's get started. Stuts, 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 stut herded and see what happens, I suppose. Yes, man, we are gonna rock it out. All right. <laughs> so, 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 do you remember when you first began to stutter? I was actually talking to my mom about this like yesterday. And I was asking her when she rem like re 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 remembers, and she was saying that I began to stutter around three, but I don't remember really around that time i think the first time i remember myself stu stu stuttering i was like five five and a half ish um yeah so does it run in your family are there any other family members who also stutter yeah, so my m m mom actually stutters, so she's been like a huge support for me over the past 23 e e e years. Um, but apart from that, no one else does and no, no one in like her 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 family i think she said there was like an uncle or something like way back um but yeah so it's just my mom my mom um so yeah see my mom also stuttered and um so so does your mom still have her 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 stutter Yes, it's not as like prominent or as severe as it used to be, but like she does have her moments. Um, she was actually telling me a funny story that happened to her, and um, she was going to meet a friend or something, um, for like coffee or for lunch, and she hadn't really met this friend before. Like they'd like kind of like to text or whatever, and she was stuttering a lot more that day than she'd be kind of e e e used to and she'd like she's okay with keeping like uh, with keeping uh, he contact but like for some reason that day she just found it quite difficult so she'd like look over to like her right or her left while she was stuttering and her friend would look over as well and she'd be like well, what are you looking at and um, without knowing that my mom was actually trying to get, get, get her, 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 her words out but not keeping eye contact and um, so like she does have her moments but like I said it wouldn't be as prominent as it used to be and um, so yeah See, um my mom, um, in her um, teenage years, you know, um, my parents worked on a farm. You know, they picked, um, they picked onions, 
watermelons, cotton. So they all had to work in the field. And, you know, my mom, she had a severe stutter. But she was telling me, I believe it was 14. She just got tired of it. And she said, that's it. That's it. I'm done. And it halted. And I mean, I mean, you know, they are st still doing, re you know, research, you know, on, you know, st stuttering. But I find that fascinating because, I mean, at at her young age, she just told herself, that's it. So I'm 50. <laughs> I still got mine, Bevan. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, um, it is um, very, very um, um, interesting. And like your mom, you know, my mom is very supportive. So um, it's great that we have that because um, it is really important. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Now, have you ever had speech therapy um, um, like in school or or I'm out of school? Uh, 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 um, and if you did, was it helpful? So I have been in and out of speech therapy my whole life, basically. Um, I haven't, no, I haven't attended it in two years or so. Um, but before that, I've been kind of going in and out. Um, I never attended it in school. My school didn't provide speech ther therapy. So I used to go like after school or before school, like a, 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 like a different, like center, or like a you know like a different place, um, and so did I find it helpful? I sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I think it's depended on my speech ther ther therapist. Like I can't even remember how many speech therapists I've been to. I think it must be around like seven or eight or something and um, there's some I definitely worked well with there's some I definitely like have a lot to thank for but there's definitely a few where like they just weren't like they were fine they were not nice they were pleasant but they just didn't give me what I needed Um, so I suppose Overall, I did find speech therapy. Sorry, I did find speech therapy uh, helpful. Um, and yeah, I do. I do have a lot of thank. Or I do have a lot to thank. Um, a lot to thank for from speech therapy, I guess. Um, but then again, it depended on the person. So yeah. What what technique or techniques did you learn in your speech therapy that you use today to help you with blocks or repetitions or whatnot? I suppose uh, like sl like sliding, so like sliding into words, um, voluntary stuttering is also or was also helpful um what else I'm trying to remember there there wasn't like i didn't like learn a lot of techniques but i suppose what i learned that wasn't kind of techniques um was like accepting it like accepting myself like having someone to like talk to about my stu about my structure and them being like it's okay you're okay um that kind of a thing um 
but in terms of techniques there was there was a couple like you know like I said like sliding or voluntary voluntary stuttering um but I learned I think I think one of the big things I learned was accepting it see and you bring up a great point i mean it's just spot on when i went to speech therapy and you know um back in the day the uh, the late 1970s i know right <laughs> <laughs> the early 80s <laughs> the 90s um <laughs> we never talked about you know, I'm accepting it. Never, mm. never. And like you, I had 10, 12 speech therapists. Um, and their focus was, we need to get you like everybody else. We mm. need to get you fluent. And that made me feel even worse. It made me feel, gosh, am I, you know, what's wrong with me? that I'm not like everybody else. Am I damaged? Am I broken? And they only focused on to help me get fluent. And so I, I wished, I wished they had talked about you know, it's okay to stutter. That is what, what um, I learned decades later, like 40 years old, you know, th that's when I had learned th that. And now that I speak with speech language therapists, they are now telling me, and this is awesome, they are now you know, talking about the mental health aspect, which mm. is wonderful. I mean, I wish I had that when I was in school, but as you know, back in the day, you know, they, there, you know, there wasn't, you know, a lot of research on it. Mm. And, you know, in the mainstream media and the, and the, you know, public, if you heard the word stutter, they would equate that with, you know, porky pig. Yeah. Not being intelligent. I mean, it's like, oh, I mean, <laughs> the hits just keep on coming. <laughs> it's like, mm. no. and so I am just happy that now they are tackling m mental health issues and the bullying and which I think is really, truly important. Mm, for sure, for sure. N now, talking about school, you are in um, Ireland, correct? Yes. So how is school life? I know school is stressful for everybody. Believe me, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a stutter, it's like a million times more difficult. How did you handle school with having a stutter? Um, school for me was relatively okay. Like I had like a relatively okay experience both. Like obviously it's a very different system, like schooling system from America. So basically we have two different like national schools so you have a primary school which is from the ages of five to 12 and then we have a secondary school which is from the ages of 13 to like 17 18 so both primary and secondary school were re were relatively okay like i never like i rarely got like teased or but only obviously there was the odd comment or odd kind of 
like like laughing like someone would laugh but like overall it was okay and I was a very quiet child um I wouldn't say I was shy because I did have quite a, a supportive and big group of friends but in class I wouldn't really speak up and I wouldn't kind of raise my hand um, I hated, I hated um, reading out in class. That was just the worst thing anyone anyone could ask me to do. I I used to like I used to kind of walk to school because like both of my like about my primary school and my secondary school were like 10, 15 minute, minute walk from my house, and I specifically remember on the walk like in my head being like please don't ask or please don't get them to ask me to read I can't read no 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 but like that'd be like in my mind um so I I hated to read out in class and like a a lot of my teachers understood that and they knew that so no one ever like no one ever 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 really asked me apart from when um, a, su a substitute teacher would come in and they obviously wouldn't know and they'd pick me and I'd I my 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 whole body was just tense up and like I'd uh, just no <laughs> just no <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you Bevan let me tell you reading out loud I did that one time, Bevan. One time. <laughs> yeah. It it was horrible. It was rough. And I mean, and how they did it, it during during our schools, um, we have um a um you know multi part school system here. We have um elementary, mm -hmm. you know, grade one through five and then we have junior high you know seven to nine and then we have high school from you know 10 to 12 and so i had to read in um elementary school and it, it, it and how they did it is <laughs> they would go down the row so like um i was at the halfway point and and you don't ever forget <laughs> this type of trauma <laughs> you don't forget it so i was right at the halfway point of the row and the teacher had each one uh had each of us read a paragraph and so i knew what i was going to read and bevan there were so many consonants so many vowels. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know i know i can't do this but so I'm um, after each kid read their part, my heart was hurting more and I couldn't, I mean, I was sweating. Every organ in my body was tense. And when it was my turn, we had to get up and hold a book and read that paragraph. And, you know, it could have been a book, you know, that one tiny paragraph. And I stumbled, I repeated, I blocked and it was... I I only read the first line and I couldn't do it. And so I heard all of the kids laughing. So I sat down and to make matters worse, Bevan, the teacher had the kid behind me read my paragraph. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so I told myself, I said, Pedro, cause you know, <laughs> we all talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I oh, said, yeah, Pedro, Pedro. This ain't never going to happen again. <laughs> so what I did, every time we had to read out loud, I would raise my hand and go to the boys' restroom. Bevan, okay. I did that from first grade all the way to 12th grade. Hold on. It gets even better. I did it in undergraduate school. Mm -hmm. I did it in graduate school. And I did it in the, in the you know, the job world because right. you don't you don't forget <laughs> mm -hmm. that type of trauma and so for pedro 
it's all about survival. Mm -hmm. Pedro has to survive. So I know that this ain't never going to happen again. (laughs) And plus to add, to add an insult to injury. I don't know if, if y'all do this in um, Ireland, but on the first day of school, you have to give an introduction. You know, you get up, you tell your name, you know, da da da, and then da da. I did that one time, Bevan. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's a pattern. Yeah. <laughs> I did it one time, Bevan. <laughs> it was horrible. I could hear them laughing, da 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 da. And so I told Pedro, this ain't never going to happen again. <laughs> So what I did, and it's called for Pedro, because we're all different. We're all different. For Mm -hmm. Pedro, it's survival. I missed the first two days of school. Bevan, Mm -hmm. from first grade all the way to 12th grade. In undergraduate, Bevan, Mm -hmm. (laughs) four years of undergraduate, and then in graduate school i missed the first two days because i know i know i did that in the (laughs) first grade yeah and it was traumatic it would it ain't never gonna happen again and so for pedro it is i i have to survive and this is how i survived Mm mm-hmm yeah i get that i do i introductions are the worst like especially when you need to do it like in front of a big group of people it's like um how am i meant to do like how how, how, am i meant to do do, that um but i suppose i i'm kind of different to you, you like i not that i forget get what it feels like to kind of you know start to like stutter in front of a big guru but I I remember going back like every September like into a new year of school and like wanting to like try to introduce myself and try to like read out and but I suppose once I did that once, I was like, I'm not going to, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> so I gave myself the chance. I was like, you're going to try this. You're going to just see what happens. And the same thing happened again and again. And each year I was like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> you don't forget that type of trauma. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, do you have any advice for parents and teachers with regards to children who stutter? I suppose listen to the to 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 the chi- to the child. Um, you know, have a conversation with them. See where they're. Uh, kind of for for both teachers and parents like be open with it give them give give the child the space they want and they need to talk about their stutter if if they want to if they don't that's fine but I think it's so like it's so so important and this is like I was so lucky in this perspective is that I was always given the chance to talk about it if I wanted to and even with even with the majority of my teachers they were very much like what can we do to support you what can we do to help so I suppose it's just that one piece of advice just to have that conversation with the child to let them know it's okay to 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 stutter and it's okay if they don't some sometimes and if they do like other times um and ask them what they need or what they feel comfortable with i feel like that's such an important thing 
to 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 provide the space for the child to decide what what will help to the them. And that is great advice. I mean, just sp sp spot on. Because I wish I had that when I was growing up. And I mean, you know, um, I didn't have that. You know, it's just let's get you fluent, and that was it. I mean, yeah. like, okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, you're like, okay, thank you. What do I do now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm broken. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, y'all. <laughs> All right. So let's change gears a little bit. So mm -hmm. job wise, I know mm -hmm. it's hard to prove, it's hard to quantify, qualify, but I, but, but we know Bevan, we know. H have you ever experienced job discrimination because of your stutter? I suppose, like you say, like it's hard to pr to prove it, but I'm pretty sure I have, um, and that's okay. You know, it's like, well, it's not okay. It's not okay, but, but I'd rather work for someone or with someone who is going to accept it. Um, like I remember, I went for a job interview. This is like two or three years ago. Um and they sent me an email beforehand and they were like oh we're so excited to meet you like you have all the co the, the 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 qualifications for this job um yada 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 and then i went for the interview and again introducing myself is quite difficult so i shook his hand or i shook i shook the the person who was going to interview was me hand and I tried to say my name and I couldn't. And he just looked at me and he was like, and you could just tell, like he was like, when we first kind of saw each other, he was like, oh, hi, you know, yeah, yeah. But then as soon as I spoke and as soon as I was struggling to say what I had to say, you, I could just tell his face just changed. And I was like, I'm not gonna get this job. And then, so I went for the interview and the interview went okay. Um, but I got an e email the next day and they were like, yeah, you don't fit the job. Um, while prior to the interview where you, 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 they were like, you do, you do fit the job. But then as soon as I m m met them and I, and, I, and I had the interview with them, they were like, you don't fit the job. So, if that's not saying any if if that's not saying that they that they didn't choose me because of my speech i don't know why else like you know like it, it, it's it's it was a very obvious thing um obviously it didn't they didn't out did it they didn't outright say it but i could just t t tell um so yeah i suppose to answer your question i i have experienced discrimination because of my speech in terms of like looking for jobs and all that stuff. See, and you, you bring up a great point. I mean, you have a ton of points that, I mean, I'm just jotting them all, all down, Bev, and you are just <laughs> dropping golden nuggets left and right. So I'm writing them all down <laughs> and you bring up a great point. Um, I can't tell you how many job interviews I bombed. I mean, just completely. I've I I hyper hi, hyperventilated. You know, mm -hmm. they would give me a back. You know, to you know, breathe in. And I mean, you know, I spent a long time on my name. I mean, <laughs> like a long time. It was exhausting. And like you, I had the positive emails had the job interview and then had the other email that we have um, we have ch chosen another candidate. Mm. We know Bevan. However, you brought up an awesome point that I want for everyone around the globe to hear. I don't want to work at this company if they are 
demonstrating this Mm -hmm. in the job interview. I mean, that should raise a bunch of red flags. And so you bring up an awesome point. This isn't where I want to be. Given all of their nonverbals, you know, when I have a block, you know, they look up or look down or look at their watch (laughs) or look at the door. (laughs) It's like, okay, I'm almost done. (laughs) It's going to be a minute. (laughs) Or, or, you know, 10 minutes. Um, But... (laughs) But I mean, you make an awesome point in that the little hairs behind your neck, they go up. Mm -hmm. And then that little voice in you, it tells you that that this isn't a place that will appreciate you. Mm -hmm. What I tell everybody, I tell the whole world, people who stutter, we are creative. We are courageous. Mm -hmm. We are resilient. We are resilient. And you want us on your team. (laughs) You want us in your company. Yeah. But if this is how y'all are acting in the job interview, uh uh-uh, no, I'm sorry. Check, please. (laughs) (laughs) It's time to go. Bye-bye. Yeah. And, And here... Here is the awesome part, Bevan. I mean, I lost out on a ton of amazing jobs, a ton of awesome jobs. But later in life, I reached that point. I reached that point where I embraced it. Mm -hmm. I accepted it. I said, I love Pedro. Pedro is awesome. He's confident. He still stutters. It's okay. Pedro's awesome. Mm -hmm. And in the later in life, in those job interviews, I walked in, um, Pedro, I have a speech impediment. I have a stutter. So if I get hung up on any word, give me eight hours and the word will come out. <laughs> and they would laugh and then say, I got them. I got yeah. them. Yeah. So what 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 I had learned later in life is that I disclose. I tell everybody be, because now I'm all about education. I mm-hmm. want to r- 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 raise awareness because there are still, B- B- Bevan, in 2021, there are still a lot of people who don't know what a stutter is. They don't know what it entails. And so what I do now is I educate. I tell them. I mean, I show them because <laughs> because. When I, when I have a block, my eyes close and my arms go all over the place. I'm still working on that. I'm working on my eye contact. But, yeah. but I mean, it is super important to dis, disclose and just tell them. I mean, because I can't hide this, Bevan. <laughs> yeah. Lord knows I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Let's talk about some ADLs. Mm-hmm. And these, these are um, activities of daily living. Let's talk about it pre-pandemic and in, in, the, in, the, in the pandemic. We are talking about how do you handle the telephones? Mm-hmm. How do you handle restaurants? And how do you handle drive throughs so pre-pandemic and in the pandemic. Okay, so the telephone is not my friend. <laughs> Straight up, not my friend. Uh, <laughs> um, so I suppose very. I suppose pre-pandemic and in the pandemic, in relation to the t- telephone, is very similar. I suppose I, I, I. I did use it more pre-pandemic, but obviously during the pandemic, I suppose it's kind of equal, but I was using it for different um, reasons. Um, But the telephone is just not a fun thing for me to use, I suppose. Um, But I, if I, if I do need to make a phone call, I make the phone call. I stumble stutter 
can't, you know, get myself through it. And usually I get what I need to get out of the phone call, but whether that's to um, make a, make an appointment or whether that's to a friend, like um, I do get through it. Um, but still, like I said, not a fun thing. Um, drive throughs I'm kind of lucky in a way. I I don't drive. Um, I'm I'm le- I'm le- le- earning to drive, so it's, this is definitely going to become a a thing. But I'm lucky in terms of drive throughs that I've never had to u- u- use them. Um, and restaurants. So I'm okay in restaurants. I'm actually like I used to not be okay in them when I was younger like when I was kind of b- before I turned like 16 17 I would get my m- 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 mom to order my food which is kind of ironic because she also st- uh, also st- her so she was probably like why is she asking me to g- get her food when she knows that I can't even get m- 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 my m- my own food sometimes but anyway, um, <laughs> like, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, she she was probably thinking like, why, why? <laughs> um, but yeah, like after like sixteen, seventeen, I was kind of like, well, I, you know, I'm just gonna have to g- 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 get on with it because I'm not always gonna be with my m- mom or with my pet with 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 my parents and I'm not gonna like I don't want to ask my friends to get my food for me because then that just looks a bit kind of strange and so I both I suppose both uh, pre-pandemic and in the pandemic in terms of like kind of coping um, with restaurants I have been okay and I do like it though when I can point so say if I'm like sitting down and I can kind of like obviously I still try to say whatever whatever I want but I also be like like to point it's like what I want this thing I don't I'm okay but I'm not I I don't really like it when I when I go go into a restaurant and, and it's like one of those places where like the menu is up behind the cash like the desk and I need and I need to say it I hate I hate the, the hoes but I'm yeah. I'm okay those at are them. horrible <laughs> yeah <laughs> those are horrible how dare they <laughs> yeah for sure exactly um so yeah like overall like in terms of those kind of three activities like I do get g- g- on with things. Um, I don't necessarily l- l- like it all the time, b- b- but I'm okay at them. So, well, um, you know, for the record, I applaud you for just keep. I mean, you just kept on moving forward, kept on moving yeah. forward. The telephone, it was like you. It was not my friend. However, I made it my enemy. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I would ask people to make phone calls. I mean, it was, and, and so, okay, back in our day, okay, Bevan, uh, you are super young. Back in our day, we had the rotary telephones. Do, mm-hmm. do you know what those are? The rotary ones? Yeah. So if I hit a number, you, you, you could hear it. I said, oh, now it's making fun of me. <laughs> this <laughs> rotary phone. Is making fun of me. I mean, every every number. Did, 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 I said, okay, no, I'm sorry. So I would have <laughs> other people <laughs> dial <laughs> before me. I mean, yeah, and um, w- 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 we had pagers. You know, b- b- you know, b- back in the day, um, back before the drug dealers got a hold of them <laughs> and it was their thing. We had pagers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean to. You know, get a page and say, oh, my gosh, I have to call this person. I have to call this person. So, you know, I would have other people call, you know, and say, here's Pedro. <laughs> and then, like, pass it over to you. Yeah, it's just like, oh, it's like, uh, I have admin staff. <laughs> I have support staff. 
but I mean, yeah, the, you know, telephone was, was hard restaurants. I mean, you know, like you, I would point, you know, yeah. many re restaurants here in the st States have the pictures of the food. So it was super easy. Mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, drive throughs Bevan, just traumatic experience. And then um, you know how we are creative and mm -hmm. re and resourceful. I bought up a little portable m micro cassette tape recorder. Mm -hmm. So what Pedro did because uh, -uh no, P Pedro has to eat. So I would so I bought this recorder. And so I would go home and practice. I would practice ordering. I mean, okay. what I wanted, you know, there was a por there was a portion for, you know, just hamburgers, and there was a portion <laughs> for pizza, and there was a portion for chicken <laughs> and fish, and so wherever <laughs> I would head on in to the drive through, I would just push play. <laughs> it's called survival, right. Devin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's. But we are creative <laughs> and we are resourceful. Yes. For sure. Now, let me ask you this because, I mean, this is a super um, interesting topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that we're in this pandemic, okay, we were good face to face. You know, yeah. at work, at school, but no, they, they, you know, the, 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 that is all gone. And now we do everything, you know, like what we are doing right now, headset mm -hmm. and webcam. There's Zoom and Sk Skype and Teams and all those other ones. Um, have you had to do that? And how have you adapted to this new normal? Okay. So... I I just f finished up college, so I finished college back in May, um, and we had to spend the last year like all online, like because of because of COVID, obviously you couldn't go on, on campus and all that kind of stuff. And in the beginning, when we had to use like you know, microphones and like laptops and it wasn't Zoom, but very similar to Zoom. I like in the first couple of weeks, I didn't like it. I was like the way the way I describe it is being on the phone to a big group of people. And if you don't like the phone when you're talking to one person, imagine what it's like talking to like a big group of people. <laughs> no. So it's just that's that's the only way I can describe it, and I yeah. didn't like that. I was like, no, I don't like the phone. No, I, I don't like this. And it wasn't even because you know I was afraid what people would think of me or anything like that. It was just the whole idea of being on a phone call with a big group. So in the first couple of weeks, that was quite difficult, and then eventually. I was kind of like, well, this is obviously going to be a p permanent thing. I'm obviously going to have to, you know, do college on the line. I'm going to have to, um, you know, speak up in class because otherwise I won't g g get the g grades I want. You know, all that kind of stuff. So I, I just kind of got on with things it was very much like I suppose it wasn't like a survival thing but it was like either I can choose to accept it get on with things you know I may stutter sometimes but that's okay or I can choose to just completely shut down completely let it ruin the last year of college for me and not get the grades I want or what I deserve um so I suppose and then initially it was quite difficult to kind of wrap my head around this new way of thinking and doing and 
uh, of that part, I did learn a lot f f from it. I did like I kind of learned that you know whether w whether I think I can or I think I can't, I'm probably right. So w w w when I thought I c couldn't speak up in online seminars or discussions, I couldn't. And when I decided that I wanted to speak up or I wanted to, you know, be part of the discussion, I, co I c could. And whether I stuttered or I d d d didn't, it didn't really make a difference. Um, so I suppose in long story short, I I struggled with it in the beginning, but then it was very much like, uh, right, I have to do this now. Okay. See, yes, we we have to adapt. We, yeah. I mean, because uh, AKA survival. And so, I mean, I did what you did. I have to learn this. I do. So I called up my buddies and we practice and we practice and we practice, you know, and, and when it came time, you know, to do it in a real world application, mm -hmm. I disclosed. Okay. Once that light came on, I'm Pedro. I have a speech impediment. I have a stutter. So if I get hung, hung up on any word, just give me eight hours and mm -hmm. the word will come out. And, and if, there is a screen freeze. It is not my internet. I'm just having a block. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't say. Um, did his screen freeze? Because <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just having a block. It's okay. I'll get through it. I'll get through it. Yeah. But I mean, this is a whole new learning um, curve for us because we have been pushed literally we have been pushed out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and we now have to learn this new way of you know uh, communicating so yeah i mean it's um mm -hmm. it's extremely interesting you know learning in in this new normal okay so i want to ask you this now you know Granted, you know, I'm 50 years old, so I have a lot of tools to help me with my speech in my toolbox. Um, some people call them crutches. <laughs> some people call them tips or tricks. Mm -hmm. You you may have heard one of them when I was speaking in a British accent. <laughs> that is one, <laughs> one of my tools in my toolbox, Bevan Murphy. <laughs> You know, it's quite lovely, but <laughs> so, so we are talking about secondaries. Mm -hmm. So when I have a block and, you know, I still have them, you know, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to get through it. But what I do to help me out, I may tap my ear or tap my leg or tap mm -hmm. my foot, you know, to help me rhythmically get out the block yeah do you, do you do that i'm curious i wouldn't do anything like rhythmically like i wouldn't like tap anything um or kind of you know like get i i, I wouldn't yeah so i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't use any kind of techniques in that sense but I do, I've now noticed this recently. I never used to do this and I don't know when I started to do this, but I use the words like and M and, and I would kind of like, for like, and I'd go and this, and I kind of like, you know, sit, not like sing. I, I don't sing, but it's kind of like trying to get the word out in like one swoop, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but like it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, it's kind of like using those kind of secondary words, I suppose. Um, but 
yeah I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't you I wouldn't use like rhythmic techniques or um tr 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 tricks I suppose well um what you were telling me I also have that in my toolbox um I call them bumper words um yeah. and I mean you know it's it just comes out it you know you know um, I don't catch it until it's too late. But when people wish you good morning, I that G word, mm. Bevan, that G word is my nemesis. So mm. I have a bumper word. Hey, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they ask me my name, hi, I'm Pedro. So I mm. always have those those you know those you know bumper words to just help me get over the hump. <laughs> And so mm -hmm. that way I can get out. But yeah, I mean, but, you know, bumper words, um, they, you know, we're all different in our journeys. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have that common denominator that we do have a, st st a stutter, but, you know, how we go about, you know, it is different. But for me, I use bumper words i use accents i mean you know so <laughs> it's called survival <laughs> pedro has to eat so uh <laughs> okay so have you ever experienced this fluency phases so i mean you know monday your speech is awesome and then mm -hmm. on tuesday in the gutter and wednesday it's great and thursday in the gutter i mean do do, do you go, go through those fluency phases um i wouldn't have like days where i'm fluent but i have the days where my stutter wouldn't be as prominent or as severe like i don't i don't think i've ever had like a day where i'm completely fluent and if i did i just think that'd be really strange it'd be like where did you go where did where did where did my stutter go <laughs> like hold on don't you stutter ma'am <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's going on here literally yeah i feel like that would be so like strange um but I do, I do have days where my speech would be very fluent, or I suppose the way I, I would describe it is that my that I I'd be stuttering fluidly, so I'd kind of be moving for like like forward in my speech, if that makes any sense. Like it wouldn't be like you know, blocks or it wouldn't be right, like, yeah. Yeah. you know, any of that. It would just be as I'm talking, I'd stutter. So like, you know, sometimes. Um, but then obviously I do have my days where I can't string a sentence, you know, to together. Um, but in terms of like fluency phases, not my not completely like my stutter is always around in some shape or form see and i mean you know you know like you i mean there i mean the, there are days where i'm just talking to everybody <laughs> and i mean you know um, everything is all good and then there are days every letter of the alphabet is just extremely d d d difficult. And so I've had people tell me, B B Bevan, and, and uh, I mean, you know, you know, this will knock your hat off, mm -hmm. literally. I've had people tell me, oh, you're just faking it. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Why would I fake this? <laughs> yeah. I don't, Pedro, no understand, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, there is no rhyme or reason. You know, it pops up whenever it wants to pop up. I do my breathing. I do my meditation. I do my positive affirmations. And I mean, you know, it just pops up when it pops up. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, no, I'm not faking it. You know, th th this is not fake news. No, this is real. <laughs> 
This is yeah. real. And so I that's actually, oh, sorry. No, go, 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 go. No, I was going to say, I, I actually had a teacher when I was like seven or eight who told my m- mom that she that she felt that I was stuttering for a t- a- attention. And obviously my m- mom has a, st- has a stutter and she was looking at her and she was like, um... Yeah, no. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Is this the thing on? Hello? <laughs> so yeah, I've I've been I've been told that a few times. <laughs> yeah, see, you know, that's where it's all about education. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me educate you. <laughs> on what's going on yeah. with Pedro? <laughs> all right. So here here is a hot topic. So we have a couple of hot topics, but here's the first one. Mm-hmm. All right. So, do you let others finish your sentences? Dun dun dun. Okay. Um. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um. I used to do it a lot when I was a child. Um. Now, I I'm selective about who can finish my sentences. <laughs> I pick. I'm like, yeah, you can and you can't. Uh, <laughs> it's my life. It's what I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so like sometimes, like say if I'm like really like struggling to get a word out or to get a sentence out and my friend n- n- knows w- what I want to say and they finish it, it's like, right, okay, thank you you know i it's just easier sometimes and the majority of the time i'm like nah i want to finish my sentence and you're gonna wait and you're gonna listen and that's just it and so yeah i i am guilty of going down that route i suppose um but I feel like that's I feel like th- that's okay though. I feel like sometimes you just kind of have to do whatever you're comfortable with in the m- m- moment and, and accept it that it's not going to happen every time. And there's definitely going to be times where you will want to say whatever you want to say, and you will kind of ask the person you're talking to to, to be patient and to listen. But there's a few times where you're like, yep, yeah, this is fine. I accept it. And then see, and I mean, I am just like you back in the day when I was younger, I, oh, it would infuriate me. I would get so angry yeah. and into a rage, which, you know, gave me ulcers when I was young because, you know, to hear, to hear them think what i'm trying to say and then they get it wrong i mean it even would get me even more angry feeling that i am broken i am Mm -hmm. damaged but later in life you know i'm 50 i'm tired bevan (laughs) i'm (laughs) exhausted (laughs) as you know stuttering is draining so Mm -hmm. at the ripe young age of 50 if you know and that's the key if you know what i'm trying to say help you help me help you help me yeah you better get it right because if you get it wrong eh, no i'm sorry (laughs) that's not gonna work for pedro but what um what i have found is that it is always appropriate to ask never assume always ask because when I ask people who st- st- stutter from around the world, it's split right down the middle. Mm-hmm. There are some people who don't want you to do that. And there are others who would like the help. But it is always appropriate to ask, do you mind if you have a block? Do you mind if I help you out? Mm-hmm. Uh, to me... That shows respect, patience, compassion, integrity. 
And so I welcome that. I welcome that. Because, I mean, there are times where they just got it wrong. I said, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to go. I'm sorry. I just can't right now. I just can't. <laughs> it's too much, Bevin. It's too much. <laughs> I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> okay. So um, have you ever had a person tell you, don't talk to me. I want you to sing to me. Have has that ever happened to you, Bevan? Because I'm curious. <laughs> yes. I one of my teachers when I was in primary school, so I was like eleven. No, I was twelve. I was twelve. Um he was an older man. He was from the older generation. I don't remember I don't know how what age he was, but but it was definitely like a lot older than me, me, me. <laughs> and he obviously was told or he learned or whatever that people who stutter don't stutter when they're sit when they sit so i remember when i was in class one day and he and he asked me a question and i answered and I struggled to get my my words out. He like stopped me mid sentence, and was like, "Have you ever tried to 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 sing?" And I didn't know what he meant because I didn't know that was like a thing. So I was like, "What? <laughs> Why do you want me to sing?" <laughs> er. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, literally, and um. He kind of explained, he was like, yeah, well, some people who stutter, they don't stutter when they sing. And I am not a great singer, like in, you know, in like any sense. Um, But for some reason, I like I, well, obviously, like I tried to sing because, you know, you just try it and see what happens. But I couldn't get the first word out, even though I was singing. So I don't know what that says about me or my, my speech. But, but I, it got it got so bad that I asked my speech therapist to come in, and for us three to have a conversation, and for her to be like. Yeah, but the heaven can't sing. Don't ask her to sing. <laughs> Cause she can't. <laughs> See, and and that's a good speech therapist. Cause I've I mean I can't tell you, Bevan, how many times that has happened to me. It's happened in job interviews. <laughs> and it's like, hmm. <laughs> so if I sing in this job interview, am I gonna have to sing in this new job? <laughs> Right. I'm already exhausted, and now you want me to say <laughs> no. I'm no. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, and and you know, many people have told me that your speech is one side of the brain, and you know, s s s singing is the other s s side of the brain. And it's like, you know, to me, I, I mean, I'm either way. I'm I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it, mm. it doesn't matter what side of the brain <laughs> it is. I'm just not going to do it. And, uh, but I mean, you know, and that, you know, that is where we educate and we tell them like what you did, mm -hmm. which was awesome. You brought in your speech th th therapist. So, I mean, you know, uh, you know, to me, it's all about, Let's raise awareness and and let's um, educate. And so that way, you know, that, you know, doesn't happen to anybody else. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, um, you know, you know, it's stressful. Um, you know, it's a little hurtful. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. okay, so you, so you don't want to hear me talk because you're done with that. But you do want me to sing. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry. That's a no for Pedro. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> mm. For sure. Okay, so, so, so do you experience negative self talk? Um, 
yeah <laughs> that's like the short answer yeah um for sure i there this this week in particular has been quite ha- like hard for me in terms of my speech and um, i don't know why but i've just been feeling very anxious i suppose um and i yeah i suppose i just in terms of like negative self talk like i there there were like there have been moments or kind of experiences where i tell myself that i shouldn't that i shouldn't speak that i i my my voice isn't worth listening to um very very small moments they don't last that long because i check myself and i'm like no you deserve to be listened to your voice is worth waiting for 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 but there are definitely moments of self of of negative self talk and there's moments where i tell myself that i you know like i said like my voice isn't worth listening to i'm stupid i i should i just shouldn't talk talk like all these things um they used to happen a lot when i was young like a lot a lot young but like like i said in the beginning there was a few speech therapists who like helped me through that and got me to kind of a point where i accepted it and i, I was okay with my speech um but at the moment like in my current life and my current state of my mind there are definitely moments where the negative nancy i suppose you could call it kind of comes in and tries to kind of take over um and obviously those aren't fun to like expect experience um so yeah see and i mean um you bring up some awesome points um mine i named him oscar mm-hmm. oscar the grouch and um for years bevan i mean we're talking decades or i mean we're w- ooh, okay so when i say decades i mean three decades mm-hmm. that is a super long time where oscar had control and like you your negative nancy my I'm Oscar the Grouch, you know, when I had to do things like, you know, um, talk on the telephone, Oscar would just re- re- rear its, his head. You can't do that. Hello, you can't talk. Mm. So, so um, don't do it. You can't do it. Hello, remember, you don't know how to talk. And hearing that i mean he won i mean for years he won for years until i reached mm-hmm. a point 40 years old i said that's it Oop. and so when oscar would r- 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 rear his head and tell me you're slow you know you're stupid you know you can't d- do that mm-hmm. i shut him down bevan I shut him down and then I did it. I mm-hmm. did. It. And when I did it, I said, yes, I have won over Oscar. And I mean, he still pops up, but mm-hmm. I shut him down. I said, no, 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 no. You made an awesome point. You made an amazing point. <laughs> what I have to say matters. Yeah. What I have to say is important. Oh my gosh, I have goosebumps. Woo. Um, so I mean, that is super important for everyone here in this podcast, hearing this amazing Bevan Murphy to <laughs> hear her. Thank you. My voice matters. What I have to say is important. And just shut down that negative Nancy, and then I will sh- sh- shut down Oscar the Grouch because 
we do have that power. Now, yeah. back in the day, I thought I had no power. But now, Pedro got all the power. So, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so here is another hot topic. However, it's a head scratcher. Okay. So, when you are alone, can you speak without stuttering not really i i i'm a lot more fluent when i'm alone definitely i wouldn't my, my I, I wouldn't stutter as much as i do with other people but when i'm alone my i i do i do stutter like a small bit like if I'm like reading something out loud like say if I'm writing an essay or something and I read it out I do stutter stutter sometimes but like I said I'm a lot more fluent when I'm on my own compared to when I'm in a conversation with someone. See and that is interesting. I am your opposite, Bevan. I'm your opposite. When I mean, when I'm alone, I still I stumble, I block, I repeat. When I talk to my my dog Ruby Jean, I still stutter when I talk to Ruby Jean, <laughs> and she's like, "Her." <laughs> <laughs> it's just me, Ruby Jean, and don't worry about it. I'm gonna get it out. <laughs> so I mean. We're all different, and and so when I am asked the, that of all of my guests from around the world, it's just split right down the middle. Mm -hmm. Some do, and some don't. So it's just very interesting. Mm -hmm, for sure. Now, do you f feel that your stutter gets worse if you are exhausted? or stressed or anxious or you know or um all of the above um yes 100 percent. i when i'm like anxious or stressed or t tired or any of the, the those things my stutter does come out more prominently i suppose um the majority of the time now there are a few days where I, i'm like really tired and i'm more fluent th than i you know th than i was like the day before her for some reason but the majority of the time if i'm not feeling 100 percent my structure does come out more prominently especially when I'm anxious which is obviously the worst time to to be stuttering especially if you're you know going in for a new job or you're you know meeting new people um so yes, to answer your question. See, and um, you know, um, as you know, st st stuttering is draining. You know, mm -hmm. physically, mentally, psychologically. I mean, it's just draining. So at the end of the day, I have nothing for anybody, Bevan. I mean. If you ask me a question, I'm just going to get it out like this. And there's hardly any stutter because I'm exhausted. Mm. <laughs> I am. Because all day long, as you know, all of your organs are tense. Mm -hmm. every, I mean, every hour on the hour, you know, um, trying to get out the blocks and the repetitions and the easy onsets. And the, I mean, your whole b body is tense from the time you wake up until the time you get home and when you're home for me i am drained i have n n n nothing for anybody and you know i'm just 
on the couch <laughs> in the darkness. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't want to talk no more. And, you know, there are a lot of people who tell me, well, uh, uh, um, anxiety, you know, causes st stuttering. I said, no, 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 no. It may add to it, but, you know, it doesn't cause it. I mean, because we're all, we're all different. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, um, each of us on this earth that has a, st a stutter, we're all different in our journeys. However, we, d we do have that common denom denominator that we do have a stutter. So, mm -hmm. you know, I might just find that extremely interesting. Okay, so has has this ever happened to you, Bevan? Okay, let's say that you have a doctor's appointment, mm -hmm. and you and you walk into the building, you hop into the office, and there's a front desk, and there's an admin person, mm -hmm. um, and they greet you. You know, good morning. You know, da -da -da. um, what is your name? And you know, you have a block. Mm -hmm. but it's not a regular block. <laughs> I really have those. I have long blocks. <laughs> yeah. So ha um, has anyone ever asked you, did you forget your name? Yes. I've got a few comments like that in my kind of first introductory, introductory ex experiences. Um, very rarely in like a doctor's office though like very rarely in kind of a a professional way or a professional um setting i suppose you could say um i've only really caught on it if i'm at a like a friend's house and there's a new person there or if i bump into someone and i introduce myself and all that like that's that would be the only time um, and it's just like, how, how could I have forgotten my name? Like, you need to just like stop and think about that question for a second. <laughs> like, uh, er? <laughs> wait, what? <sighs> like, and I'd kind of be like, no, I haven't. And I wouldn't say, I, like, I wouldn't usually say I have a, st have a st t it's just kind of not something sort of I'd, um, Say, but I go no, I haven't, and then I try again, and then it's only the second time that they w w wait for me to finish because I've kind of put them in their place. I've kind of said no, I haven't. Just wait until I'm done, um, and then they're like okay, and then they w w wait and they listen. Um, but yeah, when when someone asks that, it's like. Um, what do you, what, what do you mean? <laughs> Try again. I mean, if I had a quarter, Bevan, for every time that happened to me, I would have a, like, 12 Range Rovers in my driveway. It's mm -hmm. like, how, in what world would we forget our names? I mean, yeah. it's, and so, you know, I bring it all back into educating you know this is what i have this is what you're gonna hear this is what you're gonna see but you know i come from a place of education mm -hmm. and and so that and I, I mean however don't get me wrong bevan i have put a couple of people in their place <laughs> but it's better that they know um that way, for the next time that, you know, it may happen, they are better equipped, they are better informed, they are mm -hmm. better educated, because, I mean, we all w want respect and patience, you know, compassion here or there, <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and um, so, you know, I just... I take the time one minute on a good speech day. <laughs> it might be 10 minutes on a bad speech day, but I 
will tell them, look, this is what I have, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that way, if you should ever encounter another one and believe me, you will, because we're hashtag awesome, um, (laughs) you will know to give us time and give us the eye contact and just be patient because it's all that we want. It's, I mean, I mean, are we, so um, are we asking for much, Bevan? No, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're asking for the same respect you'd give a fluent person and that's listening and patience and understanding. And that's all we want. Exactly. Awesome point. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, do you consider stuttering as a disability? This is a really, a really big question. Um, Cause I actually, I did my final year thesis on, stu- on, uh, uh, on stuttering and the representation of stuttering in film and TV and in my thesis, I did call it a disability in the context of looking at it through the field of disability studies and like through the field of um, kind of like ableism and like compared to like the the treatment of people with a d- d- disability. So I suppose it's kind of, it's it's in, I would consider stuttering a disability in the context of, of ableism and comparing it to people with a disability at the same time though it it isn't a disability because I feel that the majority of people who do stutter can live the same life as someone who doesn't um so in that context I wouldn't see it as a disability so I suppose in certain situations I think it is, and then, and obviously, in other situations, I wouldn't call it a disability. All right, how cool! Thank you. <laughs> that was a very thoughtful answer. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now talking about your career path, mm-hmm. um, you're in, um. Have you already graduated from school yet? I am got I've got my graduation coming up in November, I think, or October, November. Okay, how cool. Congratulations. Thank um you. what are your plans um career wise? I suppose that's a that's a that's a really broad kind of question cuz I I don't actually know um like for the immediate future i want to kind of do something create creative um i love to write like writing is like one of the one of my favorite kind of things to do like i in, in in like all forms um so i'd love to uh right kind of has a career career not entirely sure what in what context yet um but i suppose i i want to advocate for people with disabilities um as well so kind of you know whether that's with people who stutter or like other types of disabilities, I definitely think it's so important um, to advocate for that. 
and to work with people with disabilities and for them. Um, and then I suppose mental health is also a huge part of my life and something I think it's so important. Um, so I don't actually have an answer, but I suppose like a mixture of like creativity and advocacy. Um, so if I could kind of join those two together in some way, I'd love to pursue a career, a career down those, um, what's the word, like avenues. How cool. And the uh, reason why I am asked that question is because um, d did you ever consider that your stutter might be a challenge? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think, I think because given, given my past, like given my past kind of experiences with jobs and job interviews with my stutter, I definitely think my stutter will be a challenge for me, um, career, career wise, but at the same time, I know it's going to help. It's going to help me do what I want to do. Um, because like you kind of been saying the, the past, like, you know, in the, in, in our conversation, like we were, we, we, we are resourceful we're creative, we're resilient. So I just, I, I, I think even though it may be a challenge, I'd love to use my stutter as a way to, as kind of an element of my career path and use it as an advantage rather than, uh, see, and that is to hear you say that is, 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 it is awesome to use it as an um, advantage. When I was in school, I was pre-law because I love to argue. I thought I'd be the <laughs> best attorney ever. And then... One weekend, Bevan, I went mm -hmm. to the movies and saw the movie, My Cousin Vinny. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Well, there is a courtroom scene, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you are familiar with. And, and one of the attorneys had a severe speech impediment. So I was watching with intense. And in my head, watching him give his opening statement, b b b banging on the jury box to help get the word out, and mm -hmm. inadvertently spitting on the jurors because he was, you know, having repetitions. I thought that is not going to be me. Yeah, that is not going to. My heart went all the way down into my left shoe. I was m mortified. I thought, this is not going to be my future. And so the power of fear, that F word, fear. I mean, people don't realize how much power that we give it. So after that movie, I was shook. And so that Monday morning, I walked into the register. Regis drawer's office and changed my major mm -hmm. from pre-law to psychology because I thought I can help people but in a different way and mm -hmm. I mean you know hindsight is 2020 I wish I wish I had not done that but you know um everything happens for a reason um I mm -hmm. believe and you know uh I am happy you know in my field. I love to help people, you know, um, you know, I love 
to be in a a career field where I can be me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I ha- I have a st- a stutter. It 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 doesn't define who I am. I just have a stutter, and that's mm-hmm. it. And and um, but I mean, the power of fear. I mean, I mean, we give it too much power. But you know, you know, I'm at that certain point when I turn for 40, 40 is a pivotal um, point for me. Once I hit that age, I said, that's it. I am all done. Mm-hmm. I love Pedro. He just has a stutter and I'm confident. And I took back the power. I mm-hmm. took it back. No more fear no more anxiety. No, no, no. That's all gone. And once I did that, Bevan, it was unreal because decades of sh- shame, guilt. I mean, I mean, it just left. I mean, a huge weight was lifted. And so I thought, holy mac and cheese, this is a whole new world. This mm-hmm. is a whole new world. And believe me, Bevan, I'm having the time of my life. So. It is all good. It's all good. Okay, now, here is our last hot topic. Cool. Okay, so dating. Yes. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dating, <laughs> you know, is stressful for a lot of people. But, you know, for us, <laughs> it's a little bit more stressful. <laughs> <laughs> How did you handle dating with having a stutter? I... I've been really lucky in the sense that I've never had to go out on the scene and look for somebody. Um, I'm not saying this like I'm like so great. People always, you know, want me. But it's <laughs> but it's kind of like I found like in my past is that people come to me, me, me either to like friends of friends or like I meet someone like I met like if I meet somebody at like college, like they already know. I, I, st- I, uh, 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 I st- t- 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 or like I said, like to f- oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um. Yeah, so with, like, friends is that they, like, tell them. So I've never really had a a problem um, in terms of that, which is, you know, like, I'm lucky, but, you know, who's to say maybe in the future I, you know, I'll come across that and that'll be another... Uh, challenge for me to f- 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 face, um, but I'm not stressed about it at the moment. Okay, good, good. And you sh- shouldn't be. I mean, because what um, I believe in, and and you know, later on, um, I will um ask you this question. But for Pedro, um, my stutter shows me who people really are. It shows me their personality. And so I know who is worthy of my time. Mm -hmm. And, And in dating, I mean, you know, there are a ton of people who are just super official in every aspect. However, you will have those who are genuine Mm -hmm. and they will like you for you. They don't care if you're bald. They don't care if you have a stutter. They don't care if you have, I mean, just whatever. They like you for you. Mm -hmm. And once you find that person, take it from Pedro. Next year, 
um, it'll be 26 years next year. So once you find that person, it's all good because they love you for you. Mm-hmm, who cares for sure. about your who cares about your stutter who cares if you're bald who cares if, if you know if you have a limp who cares they yeah. you know they like you for you and so i love that you have a positive attitude mm-hmm. and um but i mean there i mean you know there are a lot of people who you know have you know, told me, oh, you have a cute stutter. <laughs> it's like, okay, bye bye. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that so much. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> have a nice day. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what do you think about all this new, you know, technology? You have Google Home, you have Alexa. And then you have Siri. Do you think this new technology is helpful or hurtful for people who stutter? It's definitely a mixture, I think. I think it's, I wouldn't say it's helpful or hurtful. I think it's just the world is changing. And like, you know, it's always changing. And um, I think for people who stutter in relation to technology that you need to use your voice for, I think it's a matter of adopting. Um, oh, like I, I never like to use my voice for technology things. And I'm not saying that you should just do it and get over it but poet i think it's just recognizing that the world is changing and technology is always evolving and that you may or may not have to or want to even use your voice for technology um so yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's either helpful or 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 hurtful. Um it's just something that's going on, something that's happening. And you know, it's about learning to work with it. And not against it. You shouldn't work against it. It shouldn't be. It 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 shouldn't be something you. You're fearful of, um. But you should always have the choice whether you want to engage in it, um. As well, and like I said, if you don't. If you don't want to engage in it, you don't. You don't have have to, 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 or you can find other ways. And um, I think, like I said, the world is changing, but the world is also learning more and more every day about adapting to the people, to to, to its p- people, to the people who may need that extra support or extra time or um you know uh, extra patience i suppose um so yeah that's that's kind of what i feel about technology wise my well i have a lot of issues but (laughs) regarding this new technology um one major issue is they don't give you time to respond yeah and 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 you know for just me i need time to breathe i need mm-hmm. time to meditate i need to do my my positive affirmations and and then i do it but they only give you one s- second to respond and if you don't they make you know these comments you know 
Um, I didn't get that. You know, please repeat that, which just makes it worse. However, I do have some good news. So I have been a part of two college research st studies revolving around AI, and they are m m m making it more helpful for people who stutter, giving us more time and being more user friendly. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, that's a good thing. But I mean, you know, I, I have str struggles with all of them. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just, you know, um, you know, I would rather just push a button <laughs> manually <laughs> or type it out is like, yeah, it's much easier for Pedro. <laughs> all right. So what is a, a challenge speech wise that you had to overcome and how did you do it? Can you hear me okay now? Um, I think there's so many challenges throughout the day or throughout the weeks or months that I face and I overcome them. I don't think there's a specific challenge that I, you know, that, that I have, that I have overcome. It's always, it's, it's constant. Like it's a constant overcoming. Um, I suppose one, one example is kind of going into a restaurant and or a coffee shop or something and asking for what I want like when I was young or I used to, to choose something that I could stay whereas now it's like no I want this particular thing and whether it takes me you know, a minute to say it or 10 minutes, I'm going to get this particular th th thing. Um, so I so suppose that's kind of one example. But like I said, I'm always overcoming ch ch challenges. There's, you know, as, 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 well as, t as time goes on, as the weeks and months and years go on, there's definitely going to be more ch ch challenges that I will have to overcome, but, but I know I'll overcome them. Yes, because we are strong, we are creative, we are resilient, and we will, uh, we do not give up, Bevan. We do not give up. We keep moving forward because you s s said it beautifully. What I have to say matters. Yeah. What I have to say is important. I love that. I love that. Okay, now, <laughs> whew, you had previously touched on this, but but I want the full story. So, do you think it's okay to st st to st stutter, or is it important to keep ch chasing the fluency gods? I think it's totally okay to 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 to, 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 to I it's it's a part of you. It's a part of me. It's a part of everyone else who's who 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 who's stutters. And I think if you're constantly chasing the fluency gods, you're not accepting yourself the way you are in in the m m m moment um i i will never like for like for, for me personally chasing the fluency cards is just a r r race i'm n never no win and i'm not saying you don't try to become more fluent or you don't try to ease your 
just your 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 stuttering because you know if you want to do that that's totally up to you um but i don't think you should strive for fluency if you if if you stutter because like i said it is it's a part of you and it doesn't it doesn't define you 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 specifically but if you're trying to to be if you're if you're if if you're trying to chase the fluency cards like i said you're not accepting yourself as you as as you are as you are and if you don't accept yourself life is so difficult life is so scary because how do you expect other people to accept you when you can't accept yourself see and this is a extremely important topic i mean cuz i mean we're all different i mean uh, you know um you know geographically our age our culture our everything and and so you know i get a lot of younger people like i mean 16 you know ish you know you know talk about um you know there's this new medication or you know or this or that or you know you know to have your stutter cured and what i tell them is we each have our own journey if that is what you want to do i'm happy for you mm -hmm. i support you but for pedro you know you know i i am at this age i mean i've had 20 years of speech therapy I've had hip hypnosis. I tried voodoo. <laughs> that didn't work. You know, I tried everything until I reached a point where you you know what? I have this. I have this. And and you know, for a lot of people, I get it. I get it. You don't mm -hmm. want it anymore. Believe me, I completely understand. Cause I mean, you know, there were times where I mean I couldn't get anything out, nothing. And nothing is more difficult than trying to get out what you have in here. Mm. I mean, you know, so I understand where everyone is coming from. That's your journey. If you want to try a new medication or therapy, I'm happy for you. I'm happy mm -hmm. for you. But for Pedro, I have embraced it. I have ex, 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 ex accepted it, mm -hmm. and I mean, my, my life is good. I mean, I am, I am happy. I am happy, and I mean, you know, we all have our good days. We all have our bad days, but mm -hmm. but we just keep on going. We keep on yeah. going because we're awesome. <laughs> And that's yeah. all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So, so here is a deep thought provoking question, Bevan. All right. So cool. what has your st stutter taught you? My stutter has taught me to be patient, to be understanding, to listen to like to to everyone whether they stutter or they don't my stutter has taught me to be kind to be compassionate it has just taught me to to treat everyone the way that i want to be treated like i want to be understood i want to be accepted i want to be listened to i want to be given the same respect that 
everyone else is g- g- given. So, yeah, just just to treat everyone as a friend is what my speak as as what is is what my stutter has taught has has taught has has taught me how cool my stutter i mean i mean we share the same you know it um it has taught me empathy it has taught me compassion um it has made me brave i am courageous now and i mean there are there are a lot of people that I talk to from all over the world and they tell me their stutter is a curse. Well, when I was growing up, that's what I thought I had because I thought I was the only one. I thought Mm -hmm. I was the only one in school who had a a a a a stutter. Nobody wanted to hang around the kid who couldn't talk. So I would eat lunch in the janitor's closet. I would eat lunch behind the school. I spent years in the, in the boys restroom stalls because I thought I was the only one in the world. Mm -hmm. As I got older, my stutter is a blessing Mm -hmm. because it has made me who I am. I, I mean, we are tough people, Bevan. <laughs> we are tough and creative, resilient, resourceful, and we are survivors. We are survivors. So, I mean, uh, you know, I hear where they are coming from because I was there. But mm-hmm. now my stutter is a blessing. I mean, it, um, and, you know, like you, I use it to my advantage. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we are hashtag awesome. And 1% of the world's population has a stutter. And that that, that 1% is just awesome. (laughs) That's all I got to say. Okay, so, (laughs) so what advice would you give to another person who stutters? To not ignore fluency or striving for fluency. Like like you say, like if that's your journey, if that's what you want to do, if that's if you would prefer to be fluent and you work on a, and if you want to work on your fluency, that's your choice poet to not strive for it to not believe that if you're fluent you know your life is going to be so much easier um so i suppose advice would be to learn to accept it to learn to accept yourself to learn to embrace yourself because as we've been saying, your voice is worth listening to. And if you learn to believe that, then your life becomes not easier, but a lot less painful. And that is great advice. That is awesome, awesome advice. So here is our last question. So it's a doozer. Mm-hmm. Um, 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 as we say here in, in the st- States. So if you had the opportunity to be on the world stage, to give the world in, in sight on stuttering, what, what message would you convey? to the world i suppose goes back to what we've been saying is that people who stutter are worth listening to are worth waiting for we are just like 
everyone else, we just take that little bit longer to, sp to, to speak. We're not any less intelligent, not any less, you know, any less of a person because we stood her and that it's okay to 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 because we are who 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 we we are And that is an awesome message. And so I want to just, ooh, Bevan Murphy, this has been an awesome conversation. I think you were hashtag awesome, hashtag <laughs> phenomenal, courageous. <laughs> you, you, you are just awesome, thank Bevan you. Murphy. And, you know, I want to uh, uh, thank you for sharing your story because I believe that there's healing in sharing so I mm. want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, man. The, the almost two hours, Bevan, two hours. I mean, it just flew by. I was having the b b best time. This has been an amazing conversation. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for you know this conversation. It was so eye opening, and I was so happy to share my. I suppose my 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 journey. So thank you for giving me me this pace and the time, obviously, um, to do to 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 do to that. So yeah, I suppose thank you to you you and you and you are hashtag awesome hashtag incredible. Like you're the best. All the hashtags. You're the best. Okay. <laughs> so I have the best listeners. I mean, I am in 58 countries around the globe and they're awesome. What if they wanted to reach out to you? How would they do that? Cool. So um, I have a, bl a blog, which I only set it up kind of recently. And that's my, and so if you type into your your Google browser, your internet browser, if you type in my 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 stutter and 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 dot blogspot dot com my blog should pop up up on the page and then my Instagram that's attached to my blog is just uh, at my stutter and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, hi. So if you type that into your Instagram, I'll pop up and you can send me a message or look at you know my pictures and scroll through. Um, I respond to every message I get, so I'd love for people to reach out to me if they wanted to. Um, so yeah, just those two things, just my blog and my Instagram. How cool. Um, we will have those links in the, in the podcast notes, and so that way anyone around the globe will have access and they can log on and reach out to you. And so I want to say just one, one, one more time, Bevan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been an awesome conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then later down the road, let's do it again. Because I mean, 
I mean, we all have our ch ch chapters in in our lives, and I mean, you are just st starting out, and so you always have an open um in in but in but in but to pop on back in and we will have the best time again awesome thank you so much how cool thank you so much you have a great day um um i want you to be well take care and stay safe if you like this podcast head on over to apple podcasts subscribe rate and review thank you for listening and we will talk again